EPS Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Mark Blunden and this is The Leader. Everybody is in shock. There's heightened alerts on the streets. That's Marie van der Zyl, who's president of the Board of Deputies of British Jews. In this edition of the Evening Standards Leader podcast, we'll examine the fallout for Jewish Londoners following the weekend's attacks that saw squads of heavily armed Hamas gunmen launch a massive terror attack in southern Israel. More than 10 Britons feared dead or missing, among over 900 Israelis now believed to have been killed, with Hamas threatening to kill hostages if Israeli forces continue bombarding the Gaza Strip, with more than 700 Palestinians already dead and descent into war. In London, Met police officers were seen trying to hold back pro-Palestine supporters at a protest on Monday marking increased tensions near the Israeli embassy off Kensington High Street. Meanwhile, a candlelit vigil by British Jews and Israelis was held outside Downing Street as a counter-demonstration organised by pro-Palestine supporters took place in Trafalgar Square. In part two, we speak with our crime correspondent, Anthony France, on the Met Police response, but first amid a tripling of UK anti-Semitic incidents being reported and deep concern over the fate of hostages seized by Hamas. We're joined by Marie van der Zyl, who we asked about the Board of Deputies of British Jews' work in this crisis. Apart from calls from uh, distraught people with relatives that have gone missing, even people close to home, we all know somebody who's either been killed, I'm afraid, or has gone missing. It's, it's very, very traumatic. And we've also come together as a community. We've arranged the vigil. We've had a meeting of all the communal organisations. And we've all come together at a very very difficult time. It's something that affects all of us. It was unimaginable. It was the most incredible shock, especially we've just had what's called our Yom Tov, um of Sukkot and Shemini Atzeret and Shemchat Torah. And it was not the time when any of us expected such tragic events. And to watch people murdered, massacred, paraded through the streets, it's, it's unimaginable. Can you tell us about the vigil you attended on Monday night? The vigil last night that we went to was opposite Downing Street and it was a time for Jews in the UK and Israeli Jews to come together in solidarity, in grief, in mourning. It was profoundly moving. Everybody was in shock at the terrible massacres, murders that have happened in Israel and it was a way to bring us all together. It was wonderful that we had the support of all the political parties. There were speakers from the Conservatives at the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats. And it really felt like we were supported and we were there to mourn together. What's been the impact on Jewish Londoners' day to day lives? People are going about their day to day business, but everybody is in shock. There's heightened alerts on the streets. There are always circumstances where when there's conflict, there's rises in anti-Semitism. People are very worried, very concerned at the impact of conflict. And there is particularly that concern, having seen the counter demonstration outside the Israeli embassy where there were arrests. So we are all on on the alert and we're all just struck by the magnitude and the shock of what has happened. It's just something that we never believed possible to see these scenes of murder, massacre in Israel with no warning. And what are some of the emergency calls you've been getting? There's people that can't get home that are stranded. Heartbreakingly, there are people whose children have gone missing and they want to find their children. That is just so, so traumatic. There's people that are very concerned about the reporting. There's people that are angry. There's people just, just in shock. So there's, there's a lot to do for, for the community. We really all need to pull together. And that's why we arranged the, the vigils so that we could mourn together. We could come together in unity and solidarity at such a, such an awful time. But practically, there is a lot to do and there is a lot of concern. Even, even people close to us, everybody seems to know somebody who's either stuck there, know someone who's killed, someone who's been uh, called up to serve in the army or, we're still someone who's gone missing or killed. It's awful. And, and to hear that 260 people were massacred attending the musical festival, it can't easily be processed. It's so awful. What's been your security work since the weekend? 
the Shomrim are very active in Stamford Hill. And of course, we've got the, the CST that does an absolutely fantastic job looking after our community, looking after schools and synagogues. There's a huge amount of alarm and worry at what's going to happen next. We all think there's going to be a surge in anti-Semitism. It happened last time there was a conflict. There was that awful situation with a hate convoy coming down the Finchley Road. And there were no arrests made for what happened there. And the the Mayor of London and the Home Secretary have given assurances that there will be arrests and prosecutions. So we want to have that that confidence that will happen if there is a huge rise on, on the streets of assaults or race hate. Let's go to the ads. Coming up, our crime correspondent on how police are reacting, plus the desperate hunt for the missing. Why not hit follow in the meantime and give us a rating. Welcome back. Now we're joined by the Evening Standard's crime correspondent, Anthony France. Anthony, how's the wider security situation? Since the attacks in Israel on Saturday, the entire international world has been on alert. And we saw that even in Hamburg airport yesterday, where a plane that had come from Iran's capital, Tehran, was actually surged um, when it landed. 198 passengers and 13 crew saw the police descend on their aircraft to conduct a search. And that was after the authorities had actually received a an email threat that someone was going to uh, attack that particular plane. In the end, nothing was found, but it just emphasises how not only in Israel and in Gaza, the entire international community are on alert for the fallout from events this weekend. What was the incident at Kensington High Street? Police were involved in separating um, pro-Israel and pro-Palestinian groups at High Street Kensington. That's actually where the Israeli embassy is. And hundreds of people, pro-Palestinians, had gathered outside demonstrating, letting off fireworks, lighting flares and chanting Free Palestine. There were three arrests, including a boy of 15 who was arrested for assaulting an emergency worker. And there were uh, two other arrests. What will be the Met's focus? Now. The Met will be involved in reassuring the public and especially Jewish communities in London. We already saw yesterday that some graffiti was daubed in gold as green and we've also seen a break-in at a uh, kosher restaurant in the same area, although the police are not treating that as a hate crime. What the police are doing, so there's uh, uh, the Deputy Commissioner was out last night uh, with the Home Secretary in the area is just to reassure people and in terms of the specialist squads well most of them will be officers on foot patrol patrol officers but there will also be officers who will be uh, monitoring social media there will also be officers who are trained in community liaison just to make sure that if there are any events planned in london that they are negotiating with the different organizers and you've also been reporting on some of these awful cases of missing britons at the moment we think there are 10 missing Brits or or Brits who are feared to have died. We know about Nathaniel Young, who was serving in the uh, Israeli Defence Service, and Bernard Cowan, who grew up in Glasgow. We know about Jake Marlow, who went to the same Jewish free school as uh, Mr Young. And we know that there are people as well. There's a 74-year-old grandmother of six who's missing. And um, there's also an award-winning artist and filmmaker called Sharon Lizovich from North London. And she's um, concerned for uh, the safety of her elderly parents who were taken from their home close to the border with Gaza. And what about the tragic case of Danny Darlington? Well, this is a very tragic story of Dan Darlington and uh, his girlfriend, Caroline. He's a photographer. They were kibbutz in the south of Israel and they vanished. Now, their families have received reports on the ground that they may have come to harm, but there's been no official notification of that. But I mean, what, what's particularly stra- tragic about this particular story is that the two of them were enjoying their holiday and they chronicled their adventures on social media. And, you know, they were a very, very happy couple. Dan's sister posted on um, social media talking about only days before he was riding his bike laughing taking photos of the sunsets enjoying life's simple pleasures he was due to leave for tel aviv he decided to stay one more day to explore the area he was and and, you know that's just so tragic you know a young couple at the beginning of their lives
There's more on this story in the Evening Standard newspaper and online at standard.co.uk. That's The Leader. We're back on Wednesday at 4pm. <laughs>